Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young, and we are here yet again, ready to rock and roll to uh, discuss some K-State football action. And we've gone over already this week some of the uh, other nuances that are coming up in the 2024 season and also 2025 recruiting yesterday with Drew Galloway. But today we're going to focus on the running backs because we've talked about, hey, depth behind quarterback this year might be a problem for K-State if they have to go to it. But ultimately, Avery Johnson has given no reason to think that he won't be able to stay healthy. And you don't have to worry about a second quarterback until you have to worry about a second quarterback. Running back is a little bit different because we've seen during really the entire tenure of Chris Kleiman at K-State, he likes to have two running backs that he can rely on and go to in whatever situation and not feel like one is greater than the other now obviously you had deuce vaughn for three years so you did have a running back that was greater than the others but when dj giddens became you know ready to be out there he still got significant carries in games where deuce vaughn was you know racking up hundreds of yards so dj giddens is back he is the unquestioned number one but how things fall in line behind him is a little interesting after they lost trayshawn ward to the transfer portal and now the the depth that's there uh, I, I think I compiled it. There's only 15 total yards uh, coming back onto this team that, uh, that have been accrued over the course of a college football career behind DJ Giddens. So what are the expectations for running back in 2024 for you and where K-State goes? And you can start just by talking about, I mean, probably how good of a year you think DJ Giddens can have. Well, I continue to hear that they're not – necessarily in the business or in the market for another running back. Uh, I think part of that is you want to keep the guys you have. You don't want to get anyone a little restless, I don't think. But it is interesting because I think there's four on scholarship. Now, maybe LeJane's white, like not a ton of eligibility left. Maybe they just give him a scholarship. It wouldn't shock me. Um, It's a guy that is kind of a fixture on special teams for them and is – Number two in yards. Yeah, and number returning. two in so, yards returning. So uh, it, it wouldn't shock me. Probably someone that's kind of earned it, too. I mean, it, it takes a lot of toughness, too, to just kind of be willing to be beat on in practice every day for what will be, what, his third season at Kansas State and just totally okay with that being the case. So um, that wouldn't shock me. Th- but I will say this. I don't I don't know if I expect him to be running back, to That it'll probably be maybe Joe Jackson Maybe Davon Rice, the true freshman that they like a lot. But at the end of the day, they do have DJ Giddens. And if it wasn't for Ollie Gordon, DJ Giddens is probably the best running back returning in the Big 12. Yeah, the, the, the Big 12 is going to be loaded next year in terms of what they have running back-wise. And DJ Giddens is a, is a real fixture in there. And I think the only thing that maybe could slow DJ Giddens down this year is if you think busting in a lot of new pieces on the offensive line will make it a little bit tougher for him, but he's just, he's such a hard runner and, and like has found a way to be successful. Um, And we saw, I mean, he had good runs in the game against KU uh, at certain points when they needed it. He was really good uh, in the pop tarts bowl for K state. So I think DJ Giddens will be able to figure it out. Now, how things fall in line behind him will be interesting. So, Ultimately, who do you think is, you know, game number one, UT Martin? And maybe that's the wrong answer because that game you can kind of be a little bit different. So I guess the the question would be Arizona, Arizona you know, that, that Friday game because it's going to be week three. That's that's a big one. Who yep. who gets the second touch after DJ Giddens at running back? Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, I d- I think it's probably going to be between Joe Jackson and Davon Rice. That would be my guess. Um, it would also be my guess that early on, it might be the DJ Giddens show a little bit because you let those other guys develop a little bit further, or maybe they need more more time in the first couple of games if they have the freedom and liberty to do that so that they get their feet wet and are able to compete at a high level against – high caliber teams because of that experience that they acquire in the first few weeks. Now, I don't know if you can really, I don't know if Tulane's really a get feet wet game, but you'd hope UT Martin is at least. So uh, to your point, I think that game could be used as that almost of as it's not a scrimmage of sorts, but hopefully it can turn into a scrimmage of sorts. 
Um, yeah, that, that 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 seems to be kind of what you would think there is that that game you can give guys a lot more time to acclimate themselves. Yeah, like if the prop bets are still a thing, it looks like the NCAA <laughs> is hoping that they're not. You, yeah, maybe come on, DJ, get, DJ Giddens under touches under carries against uh, UT Martin just so that they can get some other guys in there. So uh, yeah, I'm giving you a prop bet out uh, about uh, what six months out. So don't say I didn't help you. <laughs> so <laughs> if if you're if you want to look at this, this would probably be comparative to what K State had in 2022, where Deuce Vaughn was back uh, and it was his show unquestioned. Then you look at DJ Giddens and I, people I think remember, hey, at the end of the year there, like he had some big games. He scored a touchdown and uh, three straight games to end the regular season against Baylor, West Virginia, and KU. But early in the year. His carries, he had six against South Dakota, two against Missouri, nine against Tulane, but remember, Deuce missed some time in that game because he got banged up. Then two at Oklahoma, eight against Iowa State, four against TCU, seven at Oklahoma State, and two against Texas. He didn't go over double digits until Baylor and West Virginia, games that K-State controlled for most of it. Uh, he had nine against KU, nine against Alabama, and six in the Big 12 title game. So that's probably what you're looking at more this year for K-State at running back because Deuce's carries that year, as should be expected for a player of his caliber, uh, they were they were pretty high. And in games where K-State needed it, Deuce Vaughn touched the ball 25 times, basically. So uh, I think that's probably where you're looking. But skill set-wise, it seems like Devon Rice is the name that we've talked about quite a bit uh, coming in as a true freshman where there's – the skill set that he could probably be involved in the passing game some and can can help you out a little bit, but you're probably not going to rely too much on these guys. No, unless unless he's even better than advertised or better than we're anticipating. I we say Devon Rice one that's because he's kind of hit the ground running. A guy yeah. that's uh, got here early, enrolled in January, is known to be a workout warrior and uh, a guy that just lives, breathes, and eats football, sleeps football, all of that stuff. And so, and on top of that, he is the most unique running back that they have and that he can provide a different element that nobody else in the room has for just from a, a different kind of gear, a different kind of explosiveness element. Uh, he has that. So to be able to distinguish yourself like that typically can get you on the field sometimes sooner rather than later. What I will also say is that DJ Ginnins, and we probably need to knock on some wood. I don't have any around me but he has proven to be very durable so far in his career. I can't really think of an injury that he's had at any point. Deuce Vaughn was the same way, but DJ hasn't taken on a similar load or burden that Deuce Vaughn did at different parts of his career in terms of the touches and snaps that he was getting. He could be getting that this year. We'll see if that changes or if he can maintain that durability one thing that Deuce Vaughn was special at that hopefully, you know, DJ Giddens was able to learn from is how to take care of his body throughout a week to be able to go every week at, you know, top form or at least close to it. Because it takes not just being good on a football field, but it takes being disciplined off the football field in order to take your body, take care of your body, recover, recoup, and be ready to go and back to as fresh as you can be on Saturday, that's not something that is something that you're born with. That's got to be something that you're committed and devoted to doing. Yeah. you know, I, I, And I think that this staff is, they like what they have, but it would make, it makes you uneasy as, as an outsider and a fan, I think to look and say, okay, you see DJ Gins right there over 1700 yards in his career. You know what he is. And then, it's LaJames White who has 14 yards in mop-up duty, and Joe Jackson has four carries, and it resulted in one yard. And, and look, it's not fair to judge a true freshman in game one last year. Uh, DJ but, but he yeah, struggled he four, in that game. Yeah, he had four more carries as a true freshman than Joe Jackson. So, yeah. or Joe Jackson had four more carries as a true freshman than DJ Giddens. I mean, DJ yeah. Giddens didn't get on the field as a true freshman. Joe Jackson did a little bit different. Um that doesn't mean the two are the same, doesn't mean the two are different, but you can't judge it based on that. Big off season. Anything that they can get out of Joe Jackson, we'll see it. how much they like him, how much they want him, how much he can do. But it would be big because the other two are true freshmen. 
right? So he's at least been there. They need him to take that next step. Yeah, we'll see how it ends up looking for K-State, but obviously uh, game one will come and there will be questions about that and kind of like what we just discussed. I really don't think you get the answers to it until probably game two or three even because uh, you, you just don't know what Tulane's going to look like this year and how that game ends up working out. So it'll probably be a lot of DJ Giddens early, and that probably won't change throughout the year looking at how things worked out. But uh, we've seen in, in Kleiman's time, he does like to be able to have another guy that can go out there and and play meaningful reps, not just, hey, you're going to be our, our only guy. You, you like to be able to have somebody that can give you a couple of touches here and there and still not really miss a beat with what's done offensively. So that's what K-State has in store at running back. And I think there's little concern about what DJ Gins can do. It's just making sure that uh, you are you have the right options behind him if you can get it figured out. So that will do it for this discussion on the running backs. We'll be back throughout the week and into the next uh, with more K-State football news as spring practice rolls on. Drew will have everything covered from a recruiting standpoint and plenty of uh, basketball stuff going to be on the way, no doubt, in the near future because the transfer portal is open. K-State has to be active in it, and they'll be working that to see where things end up going. So. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.